Welcome everyone. This is another video about uh, Peltier cooling. So I made a different uh, cooling system and I would like to try something else than previously. So as you can see, we have this big black box, which is a power supply, uh, 15 amperes and uh, 12 volts per uh, channel. So it's a dual channel power supply. Uh, I made it myself. You can check some videos about this. And then uh, this display here, it is showing the temperature of the water which is inside the water cooling system. So this is basically the temperature of the water which is exiting on the hot side of the patio down here. So let's go to this metal block. So this is basically two 4x4 four four centimeters aluminium block and in between these blocks uh, there is a TEC 12715 uh, Peltier uh, cooler. So the cold side is up here and the hot side is down here. So as I told you, the hot side uh, will be cooled by a computer uh, water cooler system. And then the hot side uh, will go through this jug here. You can see this is the temperature of the water in the jug. Uh, there is one liter of water in this system roughly and you can see it's now almost 45 degrees Celsius. So the water comes through this hose, goes across this thing and then exits here and it's, uh, it is getting pumped back to the jug and then it circulates. So what I try to see here is how much time it takes to cool down the water in the jug to zero degrees by using one single Peltier cooler and uh, by cooling the hot side of it by uh, water cooling and then just circulating air, uh, sorry, circulating water uh, through, the, uh, through the cooler here. And what is uh, interesting about this uh, experiment is that here you have basically a direct connection uh, to the cold side of the Peltier cooler. So you can expect much better uh, thermal contact and much better cooling performance. So you can utilize the cooling performance of this device much easier. So we will see what happens. And uh, previously, for example, in my previous video, I was trying to cool something down, a cup of water uh, placed in a insulated box via heat transfer through the air and that's not too efficient as we know. So here we have basically a direct contact because the only thing that is between the water which is circulating in the system and the cold side is the silicon uh, heat uh, grease and uh, then the aluminium block. So we will see how far we can go. And this is also a better performing thermal cooler. So we will see how much current we can pump in it and uh, cool down the water to cool temperatures. So I just start all the pumps and everything now. Uh, I switch on the power supply and everything will be noisy, but hopefully we will see and hear everything that we need to. So let's go. So now you see that uh, the temperature was changing a little bit because it was different here and it was different in the jug. So then this water was moved uh, into the jug and changed the temperature of the water. But now the only cooling that happens to the water which is circulating in this block is uh, basically the heat transfer across the Peltier and uh, the hot side of this. Thing. So basically I'm cooling this water which is in that jug with the water cooling uh, which is uh, in this corner that you cannot see it now. But uh, the water is cool, uh, being cooled now. So now I crank up the power output of this uh, side which is the side where I connected the uh, wires of the Peltier. So let's see what we can do with this. Thank you. 
so now I set the voltage to 9.9 .9 volts and uh, 7.3 amperes so it's almost 72 watts of uh, performance and then I can try to feel the temperature but it's not really changing uh, here so it's still the same temperature as the as the water and uh, all we have to do now is to wait so I leave uh, the power supply as it is and I let this uh, thing running and after let's say 10 minutes we will see what happens to the to the water So now a little bit more than 10 minutes passed. So we can check the temperature and as you can see it is 31 degrees. And then this is also 31 degrees. So this whole block is basically at the same temperature at this moment. And uh, we can see that uh, the temperature went up a little bit but not too much. So most of this temperature is uh, from the heat generated by the Peltier cooler and not the heat transferred from the warm water which was originally in the jug uh, to this part so that is good news for us and uh, I checked the data sheet of this uh, Peltier cooler and uh, it says that the maximum current uh, which we can run through this is 15 amperes so I would assume that at 10 amperes we can still uh, avoid the joule heating so I will uh, increase the current here to speed up the process so now I just go up to roughly 10 amperes and see what happens Okay, uh, we will stop at 12.1 volts and uh, 8.3 amperes because that's the top of my power supply. As I said, uh, it is a 12 volt power supply, so I cannot go higher than 12 volts or not much higher than 12 volts. So we are stuck here. So now we are roughly using 100 watts uh, of power, so that is flowing through the Peltier there and uh, we will just see what will happen to the water in another 10 minutes so let's check back in 10 minutes again now another 10 minutes passed and uh, we can see that the temperature of the water dropped again but at this time the change is not that significant the temperature of the cooling water also increased but not by much so I guess we just have to wait a lot and uh, see how the temperature develops I started a stopwatch so I will stop recording this and uh, I will come back when the temperature of the water which I try to cool in this jug is sufficiently low so we will see how long we should uh, wait until this water is cool enough so I will come back later so we passed the one hour mark we used a lot of energy and now you can see that uh, the temperature of the cooling water is still the same around 32 degrees but uh, the temperature in the jug is 13.6 uh, degrees celsius so now it's relatively cold but it took one hour to cool down this one liter one liter of water so that's a lot of time and uh, also we used yeah 100 watts of energy 
it's not too much, but uh, still it is a noticeable uh, amount of energy. So what I will do now is I will wait more because I'm really curious about the development of the temperature. So I want to see how cold I can go, for example, in one and a half an hour. So I will keep this running and uh, I will see what happens. But now, as the water is getting colder and colder, it will be more and more difficult to further cool down the water because uh, the further we go from the room temperature, the larger the gradient is, which tries to uh, bring the temperature of the water back to the room temperature. So there is a sort of, let's say, driving force, which is working against the cooling effect of the patier. So this is a bit of an issue. And as you can see, there is no insulation or anything around the hoses or around the jug. So pretty much the wall surface is exposed to the environment, which is around 24, 26 degrees Celsius. I don't uh, exactly know. We can see it. 24 degrees, at least the surface of the table. And uh, that, that's a big problem. So now it will be more and more difficult to further cool this down. But uh, I give it uh, 30 more minutes and uh, we will see how far we can go down. So let's come back in a while. So now the experiment is running for almost one and a half an hour. And you can see that uh, we reached 11.2 degrees uh, Celsius in this uh, jug, from, starting from roughly 44 degrees Celsius. So the temperature decreased around 33 degrees and uh, down until the room temperature from uh, 44 degrees we had some extra help uh, from the room temperature because uh, the room temperature the room temperature was also colder than the temperature of the water in the jug so the room also cooled down uh, the the water or the water got rid of its heat and uh, transferred it uh, to the room so the room became a bit uh, warmer but uh, the important thing is that after uh, passing the room temperature and going below the room temperature it was more and more difficult for the cooling system to further cool down the temperature of the water in the jug because uh, there is not only the temperature of the water which is like fighting against the cooling of the patio but uh, the room temperature now is not helping but hindering the cooling process and the more we go down in temperature the more uh, problem we start uh, to face because the gradient is larger between the uh, room temperature and the temperature of the water in the jug so it will be just more and more difficult uh, to continue cooling this down so as you can see roughly 11 degrees and it is going uh, down but uh, slower and slower and uh, since this thing is quite noisy and it annoys me uh, I think I will stop this experiment here so you can see that if you have uh, a big jug of water I think 11 degrees is quite good for uh, drinking uh, but you have to wait a lot uh, to cool down one liter of water so Maybe it's a bit better to put this in your fridge. But if you have more of this, for example, four, and if you can provide more power to it, uh, then you can, of course, uh, cut back the cooling time by factor of uh, few uh, integers. So let's say factor of three, 
factor of four, depending on how much power you can pump in your system and how much uh, patches uh, you will use. But then, uh, for example, if you use th uh, the same settings, so 12 volts, 8 amperes, you use the same uh, patch device, but four of them, then you will end up, uh, let's say, burning 400 watts per hour uh, just to cool down some liquid. And maybe that's not the best uh, idea, because if you put the same amount of water at the same temperature into your fridge, you will end up uh, using less electricity and maybe you cool down your liquid with the same cooling rate. So uh, maybe it's more beneficial to use it. But it's a nice experiment, uh, nice to play around with the things. So I hope that uh, this was useful in some way and you could learn something. And uh, see you in the next video.